So I sat down a few weeks ago and I created a private Pinterest board called Intentional Wardrobe Plan. And today what I want to do is to go through the steps that I took to create this intentional wardrobe plan and essentially how I'm going to continue to use it to fix my personal style and my wardrobe woes. As I've mentioned previously in this series, I have really felt as though recently I've lost my personal style. And that is why this series is called Finding My Personal Style Again. But what I think the reason is that I've lost my personal style is because my lifestyle has really changed heaps in the past few years. But I haven't really kept up with it in terms of my wardrobe and I've kind of let my wardrobe get a little confused. And the thing is, this is so normal. This is something that happens to so many of us over the different seasons of our lives. But what I think is really important is that we try to realize when this does happen so that we can catch ourselves and then we can take a step back and actually make a plan because it is this plan that will help us to be more conscious of our wardrobes in terms of what we're bringing in and what we're actually wearing and all of this really helps us to lower our consumption and to embrace a slow fashion mindset it's also really important to me personally to have an intentional wardrobe plan because it will lower my anxiety surrounding my wardrobe. I am an introvert and because of that, I find that disorganization and mess can be really energy draining for me. So this activity today is kind of the definition of self-care for me. Alrighty, so let's get into the steps that I took to create my intentional wardrobe plan. So the first thing I did was I opened up my Pinterest board and created a new private board. I kept this board private because I just wanted it to be my own little project while I worked on it and eventually I will make it public. Before pinning, I got my notebook out and I wrote down a few points of intentionality that I spoke about in the previous video in this series. Things like dress for my lifestyle, stop chasing my fantasy self, have less black and introduce more color, etc. If you haven't seen that video where I set my style intentions, I will just link it above up here so you can go back and watch that. Once I had my notes written down next to me, it was time to start pinning. So before looking for outfit pictures that I liked, I wanted to first find some images that had colors and vibes that I wanted my wardrobe direction to go in. These colors were just a general guideline of the colors that I like and colors that I knew suit my skin tone, but these colors weren't intended to restrict me. If there was something I eventually saw that didn't match these colors, but I really liked it, I'm still gonna pin it. And then we can go back over the board at the end and kind of check if it fits in or if it's still something that we really, really like. So to find colors, I basically just typed in a color that I liked and then the word aesthetic or paint after it. I then scrolled down and looked at more like this and found similar pins below that pin. This is a really nice, easy way to find color palettes that attract your attention. Once I had done that, it was time to start pinning outfits. Now in my eyes, there are two ways of going about this and everyone's gonna be different with what they prefer to do. The first way is to just go on a pinning rampage. Just pin like mad, pin everything that you love, everything that grabs your attention. Then you can go back into your board once you're done and remove things that don't really fit with the vibe. Or the second way to do it is to take things really slowly and be really mindful with what you pin and pin minimally. And for me, this latter option is the preferred method because when I think of being intentional, I think of taking things slow and really thinking about things. So if I'm wanting to create an intentional wardrobe plan, each image that I look at, I'm gonna ask certain questions to make sure it's really matching those style intentions that I set in the beginning. But like I said earlier, whatever suits you, do what you like, but my preferred method is to take things slow. Also, I think then at the end, I won't be overwhelmed with this huge Pinterest board that I don't really know how to minimize because that's kind of the problem I'm facing with my wardrobe at the moment and I don't want to be overwhelmed by a big Pinterest board like I am with my wardrobe right now. Okay, so the first thing I started to do to start pinning outfits was to think of one thing in my wardrobe right now that I wear all the time, that I reach for on a daily basis, that I love wearing, I feel comfortable in. It's my go-to. It's going to be different for everyone, but for me, it's a great pair of denim. So this is where I wanted to start with my outfits. So the first thing I typed in was straight leg blue jeans with outfit on the end. 
The reason I pop outfit on the end is because if you don't say the word outfit, you'll often just be given blue straight leg jeans and that doesn't really show you an outfit and give you any inspiration. So always pop in outfit at the end and then you can kind of go through and see what things you like. If there's something you like, you can click on it and then scroll down again and then you'll see more pictures like that. That's when I find images come up that are really similar to the vibe I'm going for because it's similar similar to the first outfit that you saw and that you liked. Often I find that when I just type in outfit, it's not completely inspiring. Sometimes I find some that I like, sometimes I don't. So instead I'm gonna type in blue jeans, street style outfits. And already that is just heaps better in terms of inspiring creative outfits. So using the term street style is definitely something that I like to do all the time. To make this intentional, before pinning, I'm really asking myself questions. I'm going back to my style intentions on my notepad. And when I'm looking at this image, I'm saying, one, does this fit my current lifestyle? Another big question I was asking myself when I was pinning was, would I wear this out of the house? Would I actually wear this down the street? Or do I just like this outfit on this girl? That is a huge, huge thing that I really think has messed up my wardrobe is I really appreciate style. I love fashion. I love what other people do with outfits, but so often I like things on other people. And then I think that I will like it on myself. So I get it. And the thing is, I didn't really take a moment to think, is that really me? Is that really my style? I think you really have to learn how to appreciate outfits on other people and just understand that that outfit looks fantastic on them, but it's not necessarily for you. And maybe there's something that you can learn from that outfit, like proportions or color combinations or the way that they've styled a particular piece. There's always some sort of inspiration that you can get from great outfits that you love, but you don't necessarily have to have that whole outfit in your wardrobe. This was a huge realization for me. So this was something that I really wanted to keep in the back of my mind when I was pinning outfits. That's why I think taking this process really slowly is really important because you can actually stop to ask yourself those questions. And then one of the other things that I asked myself was, is this outfit something I would really wear or is this what I picture my fantasy self to be wearing? I've recently been learning a lot about my fantasy self and what it really means. And I've seen a lot of videos on decluttering my fantasy self. Basically, your fantasy stuff is when you kind of bring things into your life that represent someone who you think you should be rather than who we really are. Sometimes fantasy selves are like to impress other people. You're like, oh, if I get this, people will really like me or people will think I'm really trendy or cool. Um, fantasy selves can be someone you aspire to be in the future, but you're not quite there yet, which it's nice to aspire to be someone, but really so often you can get tripped up and that fantasy self doesn't actually fit your lifestyle. And then fantasy selves can also be just memories from our past. So you might be holding on to particular things or you might want to buy a particular thing because it reminds you of a time in the past that was really lovely or you find it really hard to let go of because you put money into it and that was your past life, but it's not your life now. So I really do think it does come down to lifestyle and just really recognizing your lifestyle and being super honest with yourself. Like why not be honest with yourself about what it is that you love and wear so that you can really work out what you love and wear. <laughs> it's that simple, I think. So looking at images and making sure that they matched my reality and weren't indulging my fantasy self was another really important question that I asked myself. And then the other thing I did when I was looking through pictures and pinning them was just to kind of be mindful of how many trendy items I was pinning. So I really wanted to make sure I wasn't going too crazy on the trendy pieces and that I was really looking at classic timeless outfits because that is more where I want my wardrobe to go. However, I, when I say that I'm not giving up trends because I think trends can be really fun, but I just want to be really, really, really mindful of when I bring trends into my wardrobe and I want to make sure they're things that I personally love or I really did love before they were a trend. 
the last thing I kind of kept in the back of my mind when I was pinning things was to just really be true to myself. I think because I've put myself out in public, I've put my style out in public on YouTube and on Instagram, I've had a lot of people be able to tell me what they don't like about my style, which is obviously fine. Like I don't expect everyone to love my style. My channel is more about teaching you how to be creative with your own style. Because I put myself out there and I do have to be really mindful that I'm staying true to myself and not just listening to what other people say about my style. So for example, I can't remember, but I've had someone tell me something in the past saying like, oh, for a young woman, you often dress for someone twice your age, like a grandma. And at first I actually... <laughs> took this really personally and I was like oh no like do I look like a grandma like I don't want people to think I look like a grandma and then I was like do you know what I don't give a f I love cardigans and that's just a fact of life and that is my true self I love the way a cardigan looks I love the way it feels I've always loved them and I'm sorry if that offends you not you but you know what I mean but that's just a small example of making sure that I really check in with myself and be true to myself because I have a lot of people critique my style and that is fine, but I don't want to buy into it. I just want to keep reminding myself that it doesn't matter what anyone else thinks. What matters is if I'm comfortable and if I love something, then I'm going to go wear it with confidence and I'm going to feel great. So I'm going to wear my cardigans and I don't care if I look like a grandma. So when I'm going through these pictures on Pinterest, I'm remembering to be true to myself. And if I see a picture that looks a bit like a grandma outfit and I love that outfit, then I'm pinning the sh of that outfit when I was pinning things I wasn't thinking what will people think of me in this outfit I was thinking how will I feel in this outfit and I think that's really important that's really a big difference and so as I was pinning I was kind of searching things that I had in my wardrobe seeing if there were cute outfits and then I was going through like the explore page I was typing in just basic street style outfits and seeing if anything popped up that I really liked and trying to cover like outfits from all seasons as well Whew. Okay, we still have another step after this. So the next thing I did was I clicked into my Pinterest board to kind of have a look at everything together as a whole. This is the moment I was trying to really evaluate and look for patterns in the outfits that I'd pinned. And as I was going through my outfits, I did see quite a few patterns that I haven't really noticed so much in the past. Now that looking at them, they're so obvious to me, but just doing this really helped me to see them clearly. A few of the patterns that I noticed was a lot of denim. I mean, a lot of denim. A lot of denim sitting on top of ankle boots, ankle boots with a really small heel and a square toe. So not a huge heel, not a pointy toe. And that is something that I don't have in my wardrobe. Both of my boots in my wardrobe are really high heels. I think about now, I'm like, I don't think I would wear them out of the house. Like I'm approaching 30 this year and I'm just, I do not have time for heels like that big. I've definitely noticed that I, I want more comfortable heels. Like these girls look like they're running in their heels. A lot of like brown colored boots in here too that are over jeans. So I think that's a beautiful color to introduce for like autumn and winter. So that's definitely something that I think I want to add to my wardrobe, but just styling jeans over boots is really nice. What I'm gonna do is definitely look secondhand for some boots. My go-to places for secondhand are Facebook Marketplace and Depop. I know if I'm just patient and I keep checking these every few days or so. I'll eventually find something that I like secondhand and that way I can get like a nice quality leather boot without having to buy it unethically. Another pattern that I noticed was beautiful summery floral dresses in like a midi kind of length. This is something I kind of knew that I loved, but it, it really did stand out a lot more to me in this Pinterest board. In summertime, I just... I'm always reaching for a beautiful floral dress, something that is super easy to throw on. You don't have to think about your outfit that much. Just throw on a pair of shoes and you're good to go. With that being said, as an overall theme, my Pinterest board is very feminine as well. There's a lot of like beautiful vintage kind of things as well. 
a lot of high-waisted jeans, fully tucked in t-shirts, some with belts, some without, a lot of florally vintage dresses, cardigans tucked in. So it's good to kind of see that because I think I've kind of known that I do like a quite a feminine style, but that is very apparent to me now that I like that vintage mix with feminine mixed with denim. And yeah, and then the last thing I noticed was that a lot of these pictures look like they're taken in Europe or Paris and a lot of it looks like French girl style. I've actually pinned a lot of pins of outfits with women that have like long bangs. So I don't know, am I going to cut my hair? Am I going to get bangs? My inner French girl is coming out and I think I want bangs and I think I want to wear lipstick more. Who knows? My hair grows really fast. Maybe I'll just give it a go. That was something else I noticed. I think an overall theme of comfort is very evident in this as well. And just like effortless. A lot of these images and outfits are all just basics with beautiful colors mixed really well with very basic jewelry and it's just effortless. So I'm going to continue to pin things every now and then when I see them on Pinterest to this board. But I, once again, I'm going to keep asking myself those questions and be very mindful. The next step from here out is to go through my wardrobe and do an epic declutter. Of course, this declutter will be done as eco-friendly as possible. If you want to see my past eco-friendly decluttering video, I will link it up here. But I've now got my style wardrobe intentions and plan. I've got a visual Pinterest board that I can keep referring back to. I can declutter my wardrobe with this newfound information about myself and my style and the direction I want to go in with all these things in place. So that I think it's really important to do this stuff before you just go in blindly and declutter your wardrobe because you're going to be doing it very, very intentionally. And that is the whole point of creating an intentional wardrobe plan. So the next episode coming out for this series is going to be a huge wardrobe declutter. I know I did a wardrobe declutter recently, but I'm not going to lie to you. I wasn't very honest with myself. I wasn't decluttering my fantasy self. I hadn't gone over my lifestyle changes. I hadn't done any type of plan. So I just kind of went in and took a few things out and went, cool, I'm done. Nah, this one's gonna be different. This is gonna be really intentional. I'm gonna be asking some hard questions. I'm gonna be decluttering my fantasy self. I'm looking at my wardrobe in panic right now, but it's gonna be fine. Anyway, I can't wait to take you through that declutter see what else we learn about what I want and what direction I want to go in. Don't forget to spread kindness this week. It's been lovely speaking to you and I'll see you next time. Bye. That was so long. 49 minutes I've been speaking for. How many times did I mess up? <laughs> oh my god.